Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module 13, lesson one. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can describe the relationship between two decimal place value positions to the thousands place. And the learning objective is to recognize the 10 to 1 relationship among decimal place value positions. The prior learning is that students recognize that in a whole number, a digit in one place represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. Students read and wrote multi-digit whole numbers using base 10 numerals, number names, and expanded form. Moving into the lesson on page 319, we have a spark your learning. It says, Kiana is looking at seawater under a microscope to search for microscopic organisms. A droplet of seawater has a mass of about 51.3 milligrams. So what would be the mass of 10 droplets of seawater? Show your reasoning. All right, so I'm going to show you first place value. Just go back to the basics. We need to talk about decimal place value. So in our ones place value, we know we know up to the millions probably at this point, but I'm going to just start it at a thousand. And then if we go down, we would be at 100 going down, 10 going down, 1. Now, once you go past one, we get into the decimal or fraction side of the number line. Now, in fractions, we read it and say it as a tenth, right? As a fraction, we know that this would be tenth. As a decimal, it would be point 0.1. You say it the same way, tenth. Then we have one over 100. This, you would just put a zero in, in between the decimal point and the one. So it would be 0 0.01. Then we would have thousandths, and that would be 0 0.001. So as fractions, the denominator, that's what you say is the place value. As decimals, it just depends on how far away the one is from the decimal. So in tenths, it's right next to the decimal. In hundredths, it's two places away from the decimal. And in thousands, it's three places away from the decimal. You can also think about this as how many zeros. In tenth, there's one zero, so it's one place value. In hundredths, there's two zeros, so it's two places away. And in thousands, there's three zeros, so it's three places away. All right, another way to look at this, and I call it the rainbow method, is there's only one one, right? We never say one-th, that just doesn't sound right. So if this is our center, look at how the numbers next to the one kind of match, right? We have 10 and 10th, right? We add that TH at the end. Then we have 100 and 100th and then thousand and thousandths. So those numbers all kind of connect. They're almost like a mirror or a rainbow, if you will. So going back to the problem and using this, we have a chart with blue. So I know that the smallest place value I'm gonna be dealing with is in the tenths place value because I have 0.3. So I have a decimal and then a number. So a decimal and a number right after it is the tenths place value. So that's what I'm going to write down in that last box. That's going to be my tenths place value. Here would be my decimal. And then I just have my ones, tens, and my hundreds, which I'm not going to be fitting in there. All right, so the number as is, is 51.3. So if I filled it in, my five is in the tens, my one is in the ones, and my three is in the tenths, because it's 51.3. But it's asking what would happen if I had a mass of 10 droplets. So going back to the beginning of the year, we learned about powers of 10. And powers of 10 is really cool when you can just add on those zeros or when you're dividing, take off those zeros. But there's another thing in the decimal version of powers of 10 that's also a pretty cool trick. So if I have, and I'll show you up here, 51.3 and I want to multiply it by 10, if I moved 
one place value over, it's by multiplying by 10. Because you know from ones to tens, it's times 10. So if I wanted to make my numbers bigger, I'm going to shift them over just one place value. And the way that I shift numbers this way is just by moving the decimal over the other way. So if I move the decimal this way over here, it shifts all the numbers over into a bigger place value. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the three and the tenths is now over in the ones, because this is what the number looks like now that I shifted the decimal. So now do you see how that three is now in the ones? The one that was in the ones is now in the tens. And then the five that was in the tens is now moved over into the hundreds. So everything just got shifted times 10 over a place value. And the way that we do this with the decimals, we're allowed to just hop it over one time. If we were multiplying by, let's say 100, we would move it twice because we're doing two powers of 10. If we were doing it by 1,000, three zeros, move that decimal three times. And it works for division as well. You're not gonna be using it in this lesson, but if you were dividing, you just make the decimal go the other way and it would be a 10th or one tenth of the problem. All right, let's go ahead and use this information and use our new place value system to solve the next page. So if I flip to 320, I have number one that says, Deshaun measured the length of phytoplankton under a microscope of as 0.1 millimeters. Use the place value chart to answer the questions. So I have this chart that shows a bunch of ones, then this little decimal point, which I'm gonna make a little bit bigger for you. Then I have tenths and a bar, and then I have hundredths with just a little square. Then it asks us a couple questions. This is A, which part of the chart represents the length of phytoplankton? And remember the phytoplankton said was at 0 0.1. So which place value is 0.1? And then how do you know? B, which part of the chart represents the length of an organ organism that measures 10 times as much as the length of the phytoplankton? So which part of the chart, the ones, the tenths, or the hundreds? Which one is 10 times what the actual phytoplankton was at? And then C is the opposite. Which part of the chart represents the length of the organism that measures one-tenth of the length of the phytoplankton, and then how do you know? And then for D, how could you represent thousandths in the chart? So we have ones, we have tenths, we have hundredths, but the thousandths is empty. How would we show that visually if we needed to? All right, go ahead and try your best on these problems and then come back and we will solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great job. Let's go ahead and solve these together. So for A, it said, which part of the chart represents the length of the phytoplankton? In the word problem, it said that the microscope measured it as 0.1, and I know that 0.1 is worth tenths. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in my problem. 0.1 is the same as tenths. So that would be the bar portion of the chart. And then for B, which part of the chart represents the length of an organism that measures 10 times? If I wanted something 10 times, I'm gonna go 10 times bigger. Which picture shows more squares? And I know this can be kind of confusing because you see the word tenths and sometimes we get it stuck in our brain as like, oh, that's worth 10 and one is less. But because tenth is a part of a whole, it's actually very small, it's one tenth. So if you notice in the ones, it shows a really big square and it shows that 10th piece 10 times. So that's what we would need. We would need ones. So if I have that point one, and just like I did on the first page, if I were multiplying it by 10, what I would do is I would move that decimal over one place and then it would be equal to one in the decimal, which is our ones place value. And this would be the big block of squares. 
All right, and then for C, it says which part of the chart represents the length of an organism that measures one tenth? So now we're going smaller. So if I have an entire line of 10 blocks and I only want one of the 10 pieces, that would be the same thing as our hundredths place value. So I'm gonna show you what this would look like as division. So if I have point one, and I can multiply it by one tenth, but remember, fractions are division. So what I'm really saying is one divided by 10. So another way I could write this is 0.1 divided by 10. They mean the exact same thing. So these are both going to be equal to, well, how do I figure that out? We moved to the right to make numbers bigger. So now if we want to divide and make them smaller, we need to move that decimal place to the left. So if I move the decimal place over here, that looks kind of odd, but if there's nothing there, then I'm gonna fill it in with a zero. So what it's gonna look like is I'm gonna have a decimal place, then that open spot, I'm gonna fill in a zero, and then there comes my one. So now my one is two place values away from the decimal, which means I'm in the hundredths place value. And that would just be the teeny tiny little cube there. All right, and then for D, it says, how could you represent thousandths in the chart? Well, if we went from ones to tenths, do you see how it went 10 times smaller? One tenth or divide by 10. And then from tenths to hundredths, I only have one of the 10 pieces, one tenth or divide by 10. Do the same thing from hundredths to thousandths. I'm just gonna be dividing by 10 or multiplying by one tenth. So we can say here, divide by 10 or multiply by 1 tenth. They mean the exact same thing. All right, use all this information to go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems. And I'll see you back here for module 13, lesson two.